Hi everyone, this is Hiraya Shad and I welcome you to this new episode of Getting Peshawar Started. Today it's a very exciting episode and we have one of the major players of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, we have the CEO of Ignite, Mr. Yusuf Hussain, as our guest. Yusuf, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, uh, I mean you have introduced me, but I just want to say that I'm really excited to be here because this new show that you've put together I think this is going to be one of the best shows or the best show in Pakistan shortly. So very exciting. Uh, that's a lot of encouragement for us, but we do this so that entrepreneurs can uh, get hands-on knowledge from the personal experiences of entrepreneurs. So Yusuf, you are very rigorously involved in the ecosystem and I believe that you have done quite a few ventures of your own as well. Do you want to walk us through that lane? Sure. Um, my first venture was back in the early 1990s and uh, we ended up building a startup uh, which was in what's called the B2B e-commerce space. Uh, so uh, corporations, Global 2000 corporations, Fortune 500 corporations were our customers. And um, for example, British Petroleum or uh, Amoco or Schlumberger used our a software to buy and sell uh, ingredients and content from their customers and their suppliers. So we, uh, so we were at one time valued quite high, about $286 million. And then when the dot-com bust happened, we saw a downside after that as well. So that was uh, one that I've been um, associated with. And then running a uh, incubator, uh, a Silicon Valley incubator, one of whose chapters I helped set up in Islamabad, and working with about 13 startups there uh, was also a great experience and uh, as was structuring investments into startups. So when this opportunity came up with Ignite, it was something which I was already doing, I knew I enjoyed it and this was an opportunity to do it at a national stage and that's why I took it on. Right, so what do you exactly do with Ignite or what does Ignite do in this entrepreneurial space? Okay, so Ignite's mandate basically is to fix the innovation value chain in Pakistan. And by innovation, what we mean is that goods and services, ideas, ideas and inventions which get uh, transformed into goods and services which impact society. So um, it's not just about a patent or a, or a lab prototype, it's about people using that product. And innovation in the history of uh, countries and the history of societies has really changed societies around, changed the sources of wealth, change lifestyles and uh, you know change income levels so in ignite what we do is that we try to bring these kind of inventions which a lot of pakistanis are uh, uh, doing and their ideas into the marketplace through incubators through funding and now through a human resource development program as well so before ignite there was a chain of incubators already in pakistan and we've seen uh, some of them succeed and some of them couldn't do quite well how is the NIC project differed from all those incubators? Well, incubators have been around in the world since 1965. A lot of them failed and some succeeded. Uh, for example, 18 incubators set up by the government of Israel all failed. So the first thing that we did was we studied all these incubators and we learned some lessons, what succeeds, what fails. And we designed this nationwide program accordingly. For example, uh, <clears throat> a public-private partnership, awarding it to people who had built companies before or funded companies who knew what startup culture was all about. Uh, for example, worrying about curriculum or giving that 360 degree uh, hands-on learning by doing training to startups, uh, by providing the right mentors and connectivity and shared services. So we looked at all this and then we designed our programs. Yes, there were some uh, incubators before us, uh, some doing well, some uh, many doing not so well. And, and that's all fine because in a country the size of ours, there should maybe be a thousand incubators and there are only about 30. Uh, China has about 3,000. It'll maybe have 10,000 in the next three, four years. Uh, same thing with India, uh, or same thing with the USA. And India, which already had about 300 incubators, uh, the startup package announced by Prime Minister Modi is building 300 more. So entrepreneurship is the future. Permanent jobs are going down. Uh, government cannot create those jobs. Even in a country like the United States, net creation of jobs by large corporations, be they pharmaceuticals or automobile or defense or retail is net zero. 
all new job creation is done by startups. So going back to the fact that there were incubators and now NICs have come along as well, what do you think about the entrepreneurial landscape of the country? Do we have any good startups or is are there any uh, a few that you would like to mention and people to know? Well, let me mention just a couple which people might not have heard of. For example, out of our NIC Lahore, we've had a company come out, Park Vaite. Uh, the founders uh, built this nanotechnology water filter, which can filter and make even gutter water drinkable. In fact, I drank gutter water through it, by the way. And not only that, but does it at a price point that the poorest of the poor can afford it. It's about 2,000 rupees to filter 40,000 gallons, which can almost be enough for a family, average family of six over their lifetime. Not only that, this gentleman has now gotten about a $17 million funding round, and uh, by 2020 or 2021, about one million families in Pakistan who've never had clean drinking water on a regular basis will do so and in a commercially sustainable way. So that's just one example. Uh, we have at uh, our Islamabad incubator, a startup by the name of Mocha.online, and they've done a picture-based interface uh, to the internet, which allows illiterate people to interact. And in the, in the first use case, uh, illiterate women, which are really the bottom of the pyramid, the most marginalized in the Kachi Abadis or the slums of Islamabad, were able to triple their income, put their children to school, move into um, hygienic surroundings. How? Just by accessing the right jobs, uh, even though they're illiterate, through the internet. So these are some examples. Um, and then in Quetta, one of our new incubators who's just about to join, uh, we funded him earlier through our final year project. And he lost his, uh, or, or his elder brother about five years ago was badly injured in a mining accident. So he's designed this smart helmet based on IoT, which can detect poisonous gas. It, it locates you and it guides you to a safe location, even if you're semi-literate or illiterate. And um, uh, it also monitors your temperature and your, bo and your biorhythms. He's already sold 20 units. So we can see that um, from, from all over, really, our Karachi incubator is just getting going. And from there, uh, we've already had a, uh, a funding proposal we are looking at. Uh, the gentleman there, a PhD researcher, uh, uses artificial intelligence and Internet of Things to save 50% of ir irrigation water while maintaining the same yield on wheat. So 90% of our water goes into irrigation. Imagine if we save half of it, 45%. Uh, you know, right now the specter is that we may be growing dry as a country, become a desert in seven years. So, uh, so you know, this could be again a massive uh, application. So this is the way in which disruptive startups can give a hundred times, even a thousand times return, and make the sort of investment we are making into NIC really worth it. Right, so disruption is the new way forward for Pakistan and we, you, what you're saying makes me believe that through entrepreneurship we will be able to mitigate a lot of the problems. But you as a person, you have started this project, where do you set your bar? What are the objectives that you want to achieve with this project that you call in NIC? With the NIC, like you rightfully said, the path forward for a nation includes uh, investments, it includes uh, uh, education and labor, uh, it includes raw materials, there are many inputs into development. One of those inputs is innovation and that is where we are focused as Ignite. Um, and then um, with, when we talk about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is of two types. One is what we call small and medium enterprises which may be yet another restaurant or a gym or a a dairy farm or a sewing shop which are the backbone of the economy and are very important but those SMEs are not where we focus as Ignite. Where we focus is the other type of uh, entrepreneurs which are startups and again within startups uh, and startups are different from SMEs because startups are innovative. Startups bring in a new business model or build a new technology and, and therefore they are long term focused and then there are various other things they look for equity rather than debt financing and so on and so forth. So we are really focused on startups and within startups our sweet spot is technology startups. And what we see as a vision going forward is that Pakistan reaches the frontier of innovation 
and a lot of meaningful innovation which improves the lives of people comes is is designed and researched and built and commercialized in Pakistan and so all these problems that I'm mentioning whether it's water or clean drinking water or energy or education are solved through this disruptive innovation and again right here in Peshawar we've funded a, a project which is inshallah on the verge of becoming hugely successful which is electrocure uh, it saves 35 percent of electricity theft and leakage and nationwide that means about 10 percent savings in our energy imagine the impact of that that's like a kala bagnam right and um, now we are helping them getting funded and helping them interact with the government the ministry of energy they've already reached out to Kui electric so uh, so this is the kind of impact we want to do Right, so you are now running all these NICs in uh, five different cities of Pakistan and the dynamics of each city are very different. For example, Karachi will be high on entrepreneurship, I don't know, I believe. And so will Lahore. But what do you see for cities like Peshawar or Koita? How can they succeed? Where do they plug in? Well, very, you very rightfully said that um, each city has its own character. Now, Peshawar, I'm so kind of thrilled, by, uh, we, are, we are here for a mid-cohort uh, review. I'm so thrilled by the startups here, their stories, their stories they themselves tell us in terms of tripling revenue or spreading across the country, fine-tuning business models, and just uh, the success we've already attained here, uh, in my mind, by the grace of God, is quite remarkable. And I was just thinking actually when I was hearing those stories that why, how has the acceleration in Peshawar been so rapid? And, and really the reason uh, I, uh, the only reason I can come up with is that first of all, it's a far more entrepreneurial city than Islamabad for example, which is more of a bureaucratic city. So there's a lot of entrepreneurial talent here already. And uh, there was, uh, unlike Karachi and Lahore, where there are different organizations where people come together uh, Peshawar perhaps, NIC Peshawar is the first one. So uh, I, I, I have friends since my childhood who are from Peshawar or live in Peshawar and, and they tell me that they are meeting other couples or other businessmen for the first time through this forum. They didn't have existence, they, they just had their own circle of relatives or friends. But for the first time they, they are meeting these other people, this has become like a hub. Or existing businessmen are meeting with academicians and researchers. They're meeting with investors. They're meeting with startups. So this concept of clustering is very important. Uh, Silicon Valley is a big cluster where almost every tech company, hundreds of them have come out other than Microsoft and IBM who have offices elsewhere, but Facebook and Twitter and Apple and Amazon and everybody else, that's a clustering. Uh, Hollywood is a clustering, another hub of creativity for movies. So similarly, NICs are a cluster and because perhaps in Peshawar uh, we didn't have that kind of cluster before in, in Lahore there was Lums and there was in Karachi there was Nest.io and so on but here because of the first one we are immediately beginning to see dividends uh, from, from this organization NIC Peshawar. In fact the director was telling me that the monthly increase in revenue, the monthly increase in revenue of the incubated startups has now exceeded and is growing past the monthly expenditure on the NIC Peshawar. So what a great ROI. Um, so Yusuf, we've already started to see success stories in such a short time with different incubators that you've started. But a lot of this has to do with who is behind the whole game. And since you have been on both the sides of the table, you've seen, you've done a startup and then you've mentored a lot of startups. So when do you think we will come across a unicorn in Pakistan? Well, I think it could be very soon. The reason is that when Ant Financial invested about $187 million into Easy Pesa, it valued Easy Pesa at almost half a billion dollars. So I don't think that a uh, uh, unicorn is that far away. Mobile Zone. Uh, which the founder of Mobile Zone is Parvez Abbasi. Parvez Abbasi is the director of NIC Islamabad. Mobile Zone is a company which had more than a billion dollars of revenue. And of course, we have our telcos. I mean, Zuhair Khalik, uh, another uh, of our directors, he is the founder uh, and the founding CEO of Jazz Mobiling. 
So there, there are a bunch of those companies in the telecom space. We had Easy Paisa in the uh, in the space of startups. We had Mobile Zone as a retail startup. Uh, we've had uh, Innovate, which was uh, which is a fintech company. Uh, it was valued at over 100 million dollars. Uh, uh, through an investment from UAE. Uh, and then, of course, we've had Kareem, which is a billion dollar company valuation. The tech team was here. Yes. Uh, we've had Asher Aziz right here from Peshawar, a five billion dollar company, FireEye. So we are just, I think, a whisker away. Uh, the Pakistan, many Pakistanis have built billion dollar companies in the US. Yeah. Um, we've, uh, we've had a half a billion dollar valuation through uh, Ant uh, Finance's investment in Easy Pesa. So I think very shortly. Right. So as startup has become a buzzword in cities like Karachi and more like Lahore, and it is a trend now for young people to go towards startups and to innovate. But as for Peshawar, that is not the case as of yet. People are still getting accustomed with the word startup. Uh, do you want to say anything to people who are talented or young entrepreneurs who want to start their own ventures to join NIC or any other incubator and why? So. The, the key determinant of how high you go is your, your passion, your liking for something, and then your God-gifted ability. So find your liking. For some people, it may be they want security and a job in a Telenor or in an IBM or wherever works for them, fine. For other people, um, low risk kind of a business like a gas station or a shop suits them, fine. But for those people, for those people who are thrilled by challenges, for those people who follow the beat of their own heart, uh, for those people who want to create a better world, do something new, entrepreneurship, in particular startups are your calling. So for those people out there with whom this message resonates, they are the adventurers of old. Like hundreds of years ago, there were some people they stayed in their villages and the other people who said, no, I want to discover the world. I want to migrate to a new land with whatever risk there may be, they didn't know. For those people who now want to do that in the world of business by doing something new and innovative, NIC Peshawar is your destination. So I reach out to them uh, to, to come here, to look at this architecture. This architecture, this team, people like yourselves are people who who nurture, who really fire up imagination and resilience in, in, in the incubators. And that's why we are seeing these results. Just go Urdu me kate hai niyat saaf ho, mehnat ho, to Allah taala barkat deta hai. Main dekhta hoon ke yaan pe barkat hai. Logon ki aankhon mein mein dekhta hoon, unke chayro mein mein dekhta hoon. So yaan pe a kind of energy vortex hai. And those kind of people, the adventurers, uh, uh, not the pessimists. So, in the walls, when you come inside, there is a new world, a new architecture, which is positive, 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 positive for the people. Here, the team is there, here, the incubator is there, here, the mentors. Here, I meet some excellent mentors who have helped the team here. Uh, three times, ten times, revenue to increase the business model, to change the NIC network through Pakistan, to expand the market. So, these are all the solutions. Investment, we do investment and there are also a lot of people who are good deals for the best of the deals that they can invest in. So, those people who want to find these kinds of markets, for those people out there, in Peshawar, in KPK, NIC Peshawar is a place. Thank you so much Yusuf for being with us. It was a pleasure to have you and to let people know all about your different skills and all about your different kinds of work that you've done. Uh, this was a pleasure. Thank you for being with us. And to the viewers, all the aspiring entrepreneurs, I just want you to know that the applications for NIC Peshawar are open. There's a link in the video below. Please go on that link, get yourself registered. If you are a maker, if you are a change maker, if you want to do something different, this is your time, this is your place. Apply to NIC Peshawar. Thank you.